this is grip. Look familiar? Well, that's because- Oh look, Roll Cage! Remember Roll Cage? It's okay if you don't. I mean, it was an arcade racer that came out back in 99 for the PlayStation and PC, where you could ride your car upside down like that RC car you never got for Christmas. But for some reason, Roll Cage is a game with a bunch of fans around the world. Maybe it was because the demo was widely circulated. Maybe it was because of the unforgiving fast-paced racing. Or perhaps it was the thumping techno soundtrack. But for some reason, 17 years later, yeah, I know, 17, the word Roll Cage still gives many of us chills. And that's why Grip exists. Originally launched as a Kickstarter, this spiritual successor to the Roll Cage franchise has just appeared on Steam Early Access. Priced at $16, it contains some finished levels, some not-so-finished levels, two-player split-screen, and the usual rough edges associated with an Early Access release. But Roll Cage fans around the world only want to know one thing. Is Grip as fun, as crazy, and full of sick beats as Roll Cage? I'll get to the details in a second, but first, let's let the game speak for itself. Grip is a super fast arcade racer where you can flip your car over, drive on walls and ceilings, fire bombastic weaponry, and fly through the air across a number of racetracks scattered across the universe. It has power-ups, rubber banding, and winding tracks with multiple routes. All of this while some fat drum and bass plays in the background. Grip is Mario Kart, just for people who prefer ecstasy over mushrooms. It's all about momentum. Your car can accelerate incredibly fast and reaches top speed relatively quickly, which means that most of the challenge in Grip is ensuring that your car is at top speed for as long as possible. But that's not going to be easy. The maps and grip are made up of winding tunnels, ramps, jumps, uneven surfaces, and tight passageways. Even the slightest tip from the terrain or an opponent can send you spinning. You'll spin a lot early on as you get used to the track layouts and the game's controls, but little by little it all starts to feel familiar. And in a couple of races time, you'll be making the choice to squeeze through tight gaps to save you from having to pump those brakes. Plus, Grip does a great job of not punishing you too badly when you inevitably crash and find yourself turning in the wrong direction. A pretty quick reset button and option catch-up assist allow you to get back in the action post haste. What Grip does well is make racing challenging. To use Mario Kart as a touch point again, most arcade racers are relatively simple. The tracks are straightforward, the driving is easy, and most of the challenge comes from using weaponry and power-ups effectively. Honestly, that's sort of what Roll Cage was. Most of the levels were set on tracks. And while Grip does have rockets and mines and boosters, oh my, most of the fun and challenge comes from wrestling your car around its twisting, unforgiving tracks. So in many ways, the moment-to-moment -moment racing in Grip might be even more engaging than its spiritual predecessor. There's some room for work here, it's in early access after all. The destruction from the original game isn't as prevalent, there's only a handful of tracks for racing in a rather muted deathmatch mode, but the foundations are here. While there's nothing more telling of its old school roots than the fact that it already has split screen local play. As somebody who loved Royal Cage, I for one am really happy with how this bad boy is turning out. If you're interested yourself, $16 is the asking price to get early access to this lightning fast arcade racer. Did you play it yourself? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Oh, 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 oh,